mic question here about urine and thumim. I'm doing a word study and found that urine is, is related to Ur, maybe the city in Babylon. Light, fire, shining, flame. So I imagine fiery stones, perhaps. Is there a relationship between the Urim and the stones of fire references? Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any relationship at all. I mean, the, the Urim and Thummim were not shiny, glowing, flaming stones, for one thing. They were the two uh, stones that were in the, the breastplate of the high priest. Now, on the breastplate of the high priest, there were 12 other stones, you know, that when we were when we did Leviticus, I think it's the episode in Leviticus eight, but I don't know the number of the podcast episode. We we talked a lot about the Orim and the Thumim, so listeners can go back if they didn't listen to that particular Leviticus episode and get more detail. But we talked about you know the the Orim and the Thumim were sort of yes and no questions, possibly related to you know the kind of thing you would be you would determine by casting lots. And then the, the question is, well. what what about the the gemstones on the breastplate? I mean, if 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 anything associated with the high priest is going to be corresponding to light and twinkling and all this kind of stuff, it would not be the urim and thummim. It would be those twelve stones. So on that level, I don't think there's anything going on here. I don't think there's any relationship to the city of Or. Uh, r- really, I mean, I have to be honest here that the the, the question you know, sort of make some presumptions that are not good presumptions in, in terms of, of study method, but they're very common at the same time. Uh, and that is, there. there's a lot of propensity when people are trying to, to study biblical words to focus on the sound of a word. And when the sound of a word is similar to the sound of a different word, then the assumption is, well, I can connect the meanings of those two separate distinct words because they sound the same. Okay? That is just not the way languages work. It's, it's not the way your own language works, English. I mean, we can, we can come up with all, you could, you could just go all day long, you know, on, on examples and, and, you know, kind of get a good chuckle out of it. You know, I, I have a pug, okay? Is the word pug and pugnacious related, really? I mean, I like to I like to call my pug pugnacious, you know, because he'll he'll growl at something. But there's there's no there's no word relationship between what a pug does by nature. He could be playing with his toy and growling. Well, he's not being pugnacious. He's not being pugilistic either. Even though the first three, you know, letters of that word are the same. You know, he's not like violent and fighting anybody. He's not. You know, you you get the idea. The just because a language uses sounds, and all languages do, and they get codified, uh, reduced into writing, uh, doesn't mean there's any relationship between sounds. The word chin in English does not mean ch- what chin means in Chinese. Well, they, they sound exactly the same. Well, no kidding, they do. But so what? The human mouth can only make a certain number of sounds. If you study linguistics or phonology, you'll you'll learn things like that. There's a finite number of sounds that your lips and your tongue and the roof of your mouth and the back of your – there's just a finite number of sounds that any human being can make. And it's something that separates us from any other member of the animal kingdom, even something like a chimp or a gorilla. It's mouth structure, and, and, it, and it's the behavior of the tongue and the teeth and all the parts of your mouth, Okay. And even the way that the air flows through, there's a finite number of these. So you have billions and billions and billions of people and tens of thousands of languages, but they're all humans speaking them. So by definition, invariably and inevitably, human languages will produce, human mouths will produce the same sets of sounds. That doesn't mean at all that a sound in one language means, has the meaning, to a sound in another language. But this is a fundamental error that is often, I see, often brought into biblical study, biblical word study. It just doesn't work. Languages don't work that way. 